Welcome, my dear brothers and sisters, to the Liturgy of the Word. Today we celebrate the 18th weekday of Ordinary Times Monday. And the Church, in a special way, also celebrates the memorial of St. Alphonsus Liguori, who was a bishop and doctor in the Church. And so let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Let us pray. O God, who constantly raise up in your church new examples of virtue, grant that we may follow so closely in the footsteps of the bishops and offenses in his zeal for souls, so as to attain the same rewards that are his in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. At the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fifth month of the fourth year, the prophet Hananiah, son of Azor, a Gibeonite, spoke as follows to Jeremiah in the temple of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and all the people. The Lord, the God of Israel, says this, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. In two years' time, I will bring back all the vessels of the temple of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, carried off from this place and took to Babylon. And I will also bring back Jeconiah, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and all the exiles of Judah who have gone to Babylon. It is the Lord who speaks. Yes, I am going to break the yoke of the king of Babylon. The prophet Jeremiah then replied to the prophet Hananiah in front of the priests and all the people there in the temple of the Lord. I hope so, the prophet Jeremiah said. May the Lord do so. May he fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring the vessels of the temple of the Lord and all the exiles back to this place from Babylon. Listen carefully, however, to this word that I am now going to say for you and all the people to hear. From remote times, the prophets who preceded you and me prophesied war, famine, and plague for many countries and for great kingdoms. But the prophet who prophesies peace can only be recognized as one truly sent by the Lord when his word comes true. The prophet Hananiah then took the yoke off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah and broke it. In front of all the people, Hananiah then said, The Lord says this, This is how, two years hence, I will break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon and take it off the necks of all the nations. At this, the prophet Jeremiah went away. After the prophet Hananiah had broken the yoke which he had taken off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, the word of the Lord was addressed to Jeremiah. Go to Hananiah and tell him this. The Lord says this. You can break wooden yokes, right? I will make them iron yokes instead. For the Lord Sabaoth, the God of Israel, says this, An iron yoke is what I now lay on the necks of all these nations to subject them to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. They will be subject to him. I have even given him the wild animals. The prophet Jeremiah said to the prophet Hananiah, Listen carefully, Hananiah. The Lord has not sent you, and thanks to you, this people are now relying on what is false. Hence, the Lord says this, I am going to throw you off the face of the earth. You are going to die this year, since you have preached apostasy from the Lord. The prophet Hananiah died the same year, in the seventh month. The Word of the Lord. Lord, teach me your statutes. 
Keep me from the way of error and teach me your law. Do not take the word of truth from my mouth, for I trust in your decrees. Lord, teach me your statutes. Let your faithful turn to me, those who know your will. Let my heart be blameless in your statutes, lest I be ashamed. Lord, teach me your statutes. Though the wicked lie in wait to destroy me, yet I ponder your will. I have not turned from your decrees. You yourself have taught me. Lord, teach me your statutes. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one can come to the Father except through me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus received the news of John the Baptist's death, he withdrew by boat to a lonely place where they could be by themselves. But the people heard of this, and leaving the towns, went after him on foot. So as he stepped ashore, he saw a large crowd, and he took pity on them and healed their sick. When evening came, the disciples went to him and said, This is a lonely place, and the time has slipped by. So send the people away, that they can go to the villages to buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, There is no need for them to go. Give them something to eat yourselves. But he answered, All we have with us is five loaves and two fish. Bring them here to me, he said. He gave orders that the people were to sit down on the grass. Then he took the five loaves and two fish, raised his eyes to heaven and said the blessing, and breaking the loaves, handed them to the disciples, who gave them to the crowds. They all ate as much as they wanted, and they collected the scraps remaining, twelve baskets full. Those who ate numbered about five thousand men, to say nothing of women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, I'd like to begin with this quote from St. Alphonsus Ligori. And this goes, He who trusts himself is lost. He who trusts God can do all things. St. Alphonsus Ligori left his profession as a lawyer and became a priest after a long search for God. He established the Congregation of the Most Holy Redeemer in 1749. And we are familiar with this congregation in our midst because they are also known as the Redemptress. He lived an exceptional holy life despite the storms and struggles he endured. And in a special way, let us pray for our Redemptress brothers here in Singapore and throughout the world that they continue the works to build the kingdom of God and become bearers of the good news for others. My dear people, as a disciple of Christ, we need to have the eyes and heart of Jesus in the way we live our lives and connect with people around us. When Jesus in the gospel stepped on the shore, he was moved with compassion when he saw the large crowd who stood there waiting for him. The crowds followed Jesus because there was something empowering and uplifting in the way Jesus spoke and came across to the people. And so the question, is there something within you today that makes you attractive to others, just like Jesus in the Gospel? Does our encounter of the loving and compassionate Lord in the Mass through the Word of God, Scriptures, and the Eucharist match in the way we live our lives and connect with people. These are the real challenges that we need to be mindful of and strive to be more and more like Jesus every day of our lives. Quite obviously, the disciples did not have a similar mindset as compared with Jesus in terms of seeing the bigger picture. Simply put, they began to see the situation at hand 
as a logistic nightmare and became afraid that they were unable to handle and satisfy the needs of the large crowd in a deserted place. And the best way to deal with the situation was to send them away so that the people can take care of their own needs. For example, there are instances of parents who attended the mass with their children who are special and hyperactive. And they have commented that many times people turned round and looked at them with killer stares that embarrassed these poor parents. We claim, my dear people, that we have come to encounter the Lord for Mass, but ironically, we do not in any way show the face and heart of Jesus, especially to parents who are struggling with special needs or hyperactive children. Do you truly sense that our church and community is a place of welcome to such parents who are struggling with their special need and hyperactive child? and they can find loving hearts and arms that are ready to welcome such children of God into our midst. Some of the parents have even commented that they are thinking of not coming to church anymore because our church is not seen as one that welcomes the special ones of God. Similarly, you and I can act just like the disciples in the gospel who wanted to send the people away so that we are not burdened and inconvenienced by the situation at hand. Yet Jesus only said to his disciples, Bring them here to me, and multiply the measly five loaves and two fish. When these was given out, the people ate and felt satisfied. When we are in such situation, do we rely on our strength and resources? Or do we turn to the Lord for wisdom and help? Whenever we feel frustrated and unhappy, we have consciously pushed the Lord out of our lives and want to go on our own effort and strength. However, the Lord is always patient with us and allows things to happen, even to the point when we hit blind alleys and dead ends in our lives. But the Lord here is never far from us because His very nature is always compassionate and loving, who sees us more precious than hundred sparrows and has counted every single hair on our heads. The challenge here is not to live in a passive and complacent manner as baptized Catholics, but to strive always to imitate the Lord in His compassion and love for His people. And we have this example of these special needs kids who comes in our midst together with their parents. This means that any persons who encounter us as Christ's disciple will then leave from this encounter with their hearts filled with love, joy and peace, like those special children, because they have truly encountered the living God through our words, affirmation and gestures. Simply put, the more we connect with God in prayer, scriptures and the Eucharist, the more we will become like Him to those we will encounter on our pilgrim journey. When God is our source, my dear people, you will never run out of any good things in your life. Amen. We want to pray this wonderful prayer where Jesus revealed the name of God to us. This special name where He asked us to call out to God as Abba. And as His beloved one, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gave us St. Alphonsus to be a faithful steward and preacher of this great mystery, grant that your faithful may receive it often, and receiving it, praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you and your family members, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and announce the good news to others. Thanks be to God.